Hi, I'm Katie Derbyshire. I'm reading from this book here, Paula by Sandra Hoffman, um, out of my translation from B&Q Books in September. It's the story of Sandra's relationship with her grandmother, Paula, who never told anyone who fathered her child. And I'm starting a little way in. One thing I don't have to make up, the way the skin of my grandmother's face felt, like a violet's petal, almost translucent, like it had never been touched. No furrows meandered along it, nothing but fine lines, get signs, traces, like birds leave behind in the snow. And I still know her scent, warm and not sour, mild and not coarse. Her smell was better than she was, softer, gentler. She never smelled old. When I want to, I can still feel that warm grandmotherly body and the wall with the wood chip wallpaper. I can see myself lying between them on those nights after I had bad dreams. The rosary moves between my grandmother's hands and she lights consecrated candles. Sometimes my face brushes against hers. In a drawer in her room, underneath the hymnals with or without gilt edging and all manner of little booklets and cards depicting the saints, she kept a brightly coloured chocolate box, a sturdy straw box and a probably homemade blue album with red and white embroidery on the front cover. All three were full of photos, pictures of people of various ages, a great many men, some of them soldiers, men on motorcycles, a man with a car, men in a field, men alongside ships, beside tanks, by forests and roadsides, men's names on crosses, men with men in fancy cars, more rarely men with women in cars. Some of the men are wearing work outfits that I recognise from documentaries about forced labourers. Many of them are in uniform. There are men in elegant suits, men with ties and bow ties, men with monocles, smart men in casual clothing, dark-skinned men in uniform too, presumably Moroccan men, almost certainly in fact. Men with happy faces, priests, black and white priests in robes, altar boys, my father beaming and handsome at his wedding to my beautiful mother. No real family photos, apart from pictures of families I've never seen before. Women, all as sisters, Marie and Theresia. The three sisters with a child, Theresia's daughter, Theresia's daughter and my mother. My grandmother Paula with an inflatable rubber ring in a lake. Paula next to a handsome man in a meadow, long white gloves that match her flowered dress. Paula with the same man on a large motorcycle. Paula at the grave of a man who was once her bridegroom-to-be. Paula and five other women at a kitchen table, cheerful. Women in groups, lined up like a gymnastics team. Paula with her mother. Paula with an unknown woman and unknown children. And so on. Paula at her daughter's wedding, looking at the fairy tale bride. Dark, joyless, the eyes the darkest things in her stern face. Paula with a handbag in a flowery meadow, her gaze sombre, clutching ox-eye daisies her grey bun tightly wound, one leg bandaged beneath her suit. Next to her, my mother in a pencil skirt, back combed short hair and sunglasses, rather Audrey Hepburn-esque as always, and striding along a country path in heels like it's the Champs-Élysées. I spot myself, a girl with a boy's haircut and a green dress, not flirting with the camera. My grandmother Paula on the leather sofa with Marie, my, gra my mother and me, my mother looking like she's come straight out of the pages of a chic young fashion magazine, palazzo pants, a blouse that would be from Etro these days, her hair, her painted fingernails. She is 26 and so gorgeous I can't take my eyes off her. And then I see it. My mother feels out of place. I see her dark, melancholy eyes. I see that she's not present. And I see Paula and Marie taking care of me. The child with the doll and the badly cut hair, an exception to the rule. They're taking care, as always. I'm six years old in that photo. I know that because my hair was longer at seven and eight. My shiny, mid-length, silver black hair that I was only allowed for a while. Wearing real clogs and a denim pinafore dress on the island of Isola Bella in Lago Maggiore, I was allowed to be the girl who was not second to her mother. After that, my hair was cut again. Thank you.